there are still kids. Um, a lot of it happens to be queer kids who are in who grew up in conservative environments, uh, church environments, or or parts of the country where it's you know a little more rural and a little harder to to connect and get the resources you need. We like to think that the internet solves all problems and everybody can find their community on the internet. But if you are queer in a a, a conservative church going rural area in America. A, your resources are less than they otherwise would be, and B, the emphasis on A, you not being queer. So there's there's various things, right? You can just ignore it. Then there's an emphasis on not being queer. And then there are authors who've written books about going to uh, conversion camps and things like that. Now, this is the kind of stuff that leads kids to take their own lives sometimes, right? right. If they don't have right. something, someone to talk to. Well, where do you, where does the someone to talk to start with? Sometimes it talks, it comes from a book written by somebody who had the same experience. I have authors who have told me that they have received emails from kids who said they were thinking about taking their own lives. They felt so on the outside. And then they read this book and it sounded exactly like their experience and they felt whole and they felt heard and they felt like there is a future. And then I bring these authors on because many of these books are semi-autobiographical, if not fully. And these people are living full, rich lives, having told their stories. So there's that too, right? There's this idea that if you're scared of what's going to happen to your child at school, what should you really be scared of? Probably them being gunned down. They are not going to get beaten by a book that they don't like. And as we all know, uh, gay people have been reading about straight people for all of history, and it didn't didn't seem to affect them either way. So we we just need to understand that the books your children read in school are not the thing that's going to harm them. Other things at school are going to harm them. And perhaps if you're very concerned about that, you should refocus your attention on, on the access of guns and how guns get into schools. Well, I mean, if, look, this is all coming from, you know, the extreme right. So um, God forbid they start talking about guns. This is, this is you know, we have always- But been, no book killed people. a kid, you know? And, and, right, no book killed a kid. And, you know, we're, we're increasingly becoming the target uh, as, as the election crops up, and, it, and I talked to Nancy Pelosi uh, a few months back, and uh, she said, you know, that's a losing issue. And then when I talked to John Fetterman last week, he said, they're dopes if they think that's going to work. Um, so, uh, but but that goes against what's going on out there. Sure, you had a state like California, where Governor Newsom signed a bill that you can't ban book. Right. But, you know, yesterday in the state house in, in Pennsylvania, the Democrats failed. On, on the same bill. And then you have our poet laureate, Amanda Gorman, who said it's just going to increase. So do yeah. you agree with that? Yeah, yeah. I think I, I think where we are in, in and I don't like to call it a culture war because most of us didn't involve ourselves in a war, right? We didn't get to choose to be in this, but then it's like not calling the war in Ukraine a war because the Ukrainians didn't choose it, right? They're in a war. So in this culture war, I think the the side that wants information to be shut down in 2023 is delusional. Um, and I think it's not going to work in the end because every book that gets banned or challenged ends up with you and me talking about it and lots of people talking about it. And there it's banned book week coming up and across the nation, there will be small events, you know, in which people sort of feature the biggest and the grandest of the of the banned books. And they will understand that, by the way, the banned book might be Mein Kampf. The banned book might be the elders of the protocol of Zion. How do you access books like that? Because if you if you want to be a scholar in anti-Semitism or in racism or the Holocaust or the Third Reich, you do need to have read those types of books. But the issue is how prepared are you? And that's a conversation between you, depending on your age, um, and your parents and your teachers and your librarians. Right? We need to we need a counter revolution here. We need to our our librarians to become our frontline heroes, the way we think about firefighters. We need our teachers to be those frontline heroes the way we think about firefighters, because we already have a country in which our test scores and our uh, the way we perform as students is substandard to the rest of the developed world. And that's, by the way, when you average it out, we have some very, very good school systems in America and some uh, that that are are below the learning level in much of the developed world, developing world. 
We need a revolution here to say, please let's not make ourselves dumber under any uh, for anything. Please let's not take away our ability to use our critical reasoning, which means reading about slavery and saying, oh, that was bad. Reading about the struggles that queer kids are having and say, whoa, that's really difficult. Reading about Anne Frank and taking a real lesson from that. So I think there, this Mothers for, uh, Mothers for Liberty and those conservative groups are actually spurring a counter revolution that is much bigger and much stronger. But it depends on people actually doing something. So we know we have to vote. We know we have to register for vote to vote. Now we know we have to go to our school board meetings. You may have to run for school board. You may have to run. You may have to be on your parent teachers association. You may have to run for city council. This is citizenship at its basics. And, and those mothers for liberty have helped us understand what our role is as citizens. Yeah. Do you think this will, is a winning issue for Democrats to harp on the fact that books are being banned? And I mean, it's, I'm not equating it to abortion, but abortion certainly got people up and out and it's happening yeah. in, in all these special elections around the country. So this seems to me to be like, what, what are we doing here? So think about that, right? The special elections in every single case, the, the, the side that wanted abortion rights protected prevailed. Even in conservative states, even when the special elections or the referenda were brought by people who wanted the other outcome, because Americans really don't want their rights taken away. So as long as this is framed as a, we have a First Amendment, this is thought to be one of the freest countries in the world when it comes to the free flow of ideas and, and intellect, that's not a role for you to give up to the government. So you may not like your kids reading uh, all boys aren't blue. But do you want to make that decision or do you want the librarian to make the decision or the school board or the county or the city council or the state to make the decision? There is only one right answer there. Only you are to make that decision. Right. Your First Amendment rights protect your right to consume or not consume anything you want. Because one day, once you've given these people the right, just like in Handmaid's Tale, just like in 1984, just like in all of these stories, They'll take that right and use it for something you don't like, or the parties will shift, or the the, the ideological spectrum will, will move. That's not something you want to do. You have rights, protect them. I'm wondering if thus far, there is one book that stands out for you as, uh, I'm looking for the right word, I guess, is the, it's just the most ridiculous one to be, to be banned? Uh, yeah. Uh, so where where Margaret Atwood's is the most obvious one, right? Because it's it's um, because we're actually living in the world that Margaret Atwood warned in 1984, in 1985, in Handmaid's Tale that we're uh, that we're living in. Um, I don't know where it is here, but it's uh, Girls Who Code. It's it's literally a, a a book about girls learning to be coders so that they can be engineers. This is one of those. I think it was York County, Pennsylvania, which is really a little bit nuts on that stuff. What had happened is in York County, someone had developed a list of books that are that either portray or are set in or written by people who are different right meaning different meaning a little bit more diverse uh authors who are queer um, not white things like that so the the list was presented as a a sort of a gift for teachers to say hey if you wanted to broaden your spectrum a little bit here are uh, options and then the county banned all of them they just took everything on that list and 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 banned it that that was their judgment for uh for for banning books i think brad Meltzer wrote uh you know he has that i am series for kids and i mm -hmm. think it was i am rosa parks was was one of those books on that list same thing york county pennsylvania very nice place very bad for reading um those are the kinds of books that always fascinate me like a kids book on rosa parks um a kids book on on girls learning to code why why do you even think that's a problem well it's because it was written by a woman who is not white rosa parks i mean these i am series are about all sorts of people i mean i am amelia Earhart didn't get banned but i am rosa parks did get banned uh, you know, these they all got unbanned ultimately because it was that ludicrous. But those are the kinds of books that stand out in my mind. How long are you going to continue this? Till it's over. This one, there's, as I said, we all have a role to play. And I hope some of my people will form, form their own book clubs. Some will run for their, uh, it'll be on their PTA. Some will support candidates uh, for school trustees. Some will run. Some will become city councilors and ultimately state legislators and, and mayors and governors. My role is this. I will continue to outline, um, you know, to, to underscore the books that are that are being banned. But, you know, the thing about it that I love is it's a book club. We read the books. We talk yeah. about a literature. Right.
Thanks so much for watching Advocate today. Download the app in the Apple or Google Play Store to stream us live. And you can even subscribe on our YouTube channel. For the Advocate channel, I'm Aaron Dean.